Microsoft just released a new SharePoint list feature that is an absolute game changer. This feature is called the new list experience and it allows you to build forms that sit on top of your SharePoint list. Now here's the kicker. You can share these forms with anyone in your organization without having to grant them access to your list. Now, prior to the release of this feature, in order to do this, you would have had to use a combination of MS Forms, Power Automate, and SharePoint lists, like I showcase in this video. But thanks to the new list experience, you no longer need to do that. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can access this feature, and I'm gonna walk you through how it works. Let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now the first thing that you need to do is navigate to your list and click on the Forms button in the ribbon. You can see here that this brings up the forms menu. Next, you wanna click on new form. And you can see here that it has brought up an untitled form. Now, the first thing that you'll want to do is give your form a name and a description. Now you can see here, I've entered my title and a description. Now, the next thing that you'll need to do is determine which fields from your list you would like to appear on your form. Now you'll notice on the right hand side, you have the customized menu and this is where you can come to show or hide fields. Now by default, all of the fields from your list are going to be selected. And if I scroll down here, you can see that all of my fields from my list were automatically added to the form. Now I will go ahead and remove the assigned to field. Now to remove a field, all you need to do is uncheck it and you can see here that the assigned to field was removed. Now I will go ahead and also remove the priority field. And again, you can see here that the field was removed. Now you'll notice as you hover your cursor over these different fields in the customized menu, you can actually change the order in which these fields appear. Now let's say I want the date reported to appear just after the description. I can simply click and drag this into the desired position, or I can use these arrows to move the field up and down. Now I will click over into the form itself, and you'll notice as you place your cursor on top of these fields, the actual field lights up, and once you click into the field, you are going to have the option to do some additional things. Now you can see as I click into the status field, I can change the name of this field, and I also have the ability to add a description. Now you can see here that I have changed the name of this field from status to issue status, and I also entered a description on the form. Now it's really important to note that changing the field names here on the form is not going to impact the actual column name in your list. In fact, the form will also display the original column name here so that you can map your form fields to the corresponding columns in your list. Now, it is also important to note that you can elect to make optional fields required on your form. Now, you can see here that the status field is optional, but I can toggle this required button on and that will make this field required on the form submission. Now what I've done is I've brought up the list side by side and you can see here that my form changes have been saved and if I click on the new button and bring up the new item form, you can see here that what I do in these data collection forms does not actually change the properties of my columns in my list. You can see that my status column is still called status and you can see here that even though I set it to required on the form, it is optional in my SharePoint list. Now, if you use SharePoint lists regularly, but you've never been formally trained on how to use them effectively, it's likely that you're missing out on some key features. Well, that is where my SharePoint list fundamentals on demand course can help. This course is designed for SharePoint list newbies and experienced users and will help you get the most out of your SharePoint list. Now you can secure early bird access and early bird pricing by simply clicking the link in the description of this video below and filling out the form. Now there are limited spaces available in the pre-launch, so you wanna make sure that you get yourself on that wait list as soon as possible. Now let's get back to the video.
Now, when it comes to hiding and showing fields, you'll notice here that two of my columns in my list are required and those columns are the title column and the issue description column. Now I'll go ahead and uncheck the issue description column and you can see here that this pop-up appears that reads hide this required field. This field is currently marked required for the form. Do you still want to hide this field? If I check hide, you can see here that I'm even able to hide required fields in my list, which is pretty neat. Now, in terms of rearranging the form, you can also change the order of your form fields by simply hovering over the field, clicking on the move icon, and then dragging your field into the desired position. And another neat little tip is if you click on a field and click on the ellipsis here, you can see that you can even bring up the column settings menu by clicking on the settings menu option. And you can see here that this will actually bring up the edit column menu from the SharePoint list. Now, one useful tip for you to consider is that if you've populated all of your SharePoint list column descriptions, you can simply bring up the edit column menu as you see here and copy and paste the descriptions that you've already created and reuse them on your form field. That might save you a couple of keystrokes and make this process a little bit more seamless. Next, you also have the ability to change the appearance of your form. Now, if you click on the themes menu group, you can see here that you can select from one of four different theme styles. And really what this does is just change the background that appears behind the form. Now you'll also notice that you have the option to create your own style. And here you can change the background and the actual theme color. And last but not least, you can see here that there is a settings menu group. If you click on this, this is where you can come to specify whether this form is currently open, which means whether or not individuals with a link to this form can submit entries. Now you can see here that this form is set to accept responses. If I toggle this on, anybody with the link to this form is not actually going to be able to submit a response. And you'll also notice that you can change the confirmation message when the form is open. And if you toggle the accept responses field off, you can even customize the message to recipients, which defaults to we're not accepting responses at this time. Now, at any point in time, you can preview your form by clicking on the preview button. Now you can see here, I've clicked on the preview button. That is going to open a new browser tab and it is going to bring up the actual form that you've created. Now you can see here that I filled out the form and I'll go ahead and click submit. And you can see here the confirmation message. Now, once you're ready to distribute these forms, all you need to do is click on the send form button. And you can see here that you can generate a link to this form by simply clicking the copy link button. And you can also see this text that reads people in your environment with this link will be able to respond. Now I've gone ahead and copied my link and next I'm going to share it with another user. Now, before I share the link with another user, what I've done is brought up the site access menu for the SharePoint site that hosts the list that we created a form for. Now you can see here that currently I am the only person that has access to the SharePoint site, which means that no other users would technically be able to access this list. All right, now you can see here that I've brought up Microsoft Outlook and I am impersonating my colleague Diego. Now you can see here that Diego has received an email from me with the link to the issue tracker form. I'll go ahead and click on the link. You can see here that even though Diego does not have access to the SharePoint list, he was able to open this form, fill out the form, and he can even submit it. Now you can see here, I've navigated back to my SharePoint list and you can see here the entry that Diego just submitted has appeared in my list. Now the last thing we'll look at is if you want to disable a form at any point in time, again, you wanna click on the forms button, you want to hover over your form, click on the ellipsis, and you can see here in this menu, you can simply stop accepting responses and that will disable this form so that users who have the link are unable to submit any new entries. 
So that's it. In this video, I demonstrated how you can use the new list experience in SharePoint to help you collect data more efficiently. Now, if you found this video helpful, you might also want to check out one of these and you want to make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my new content. I'm Louis Ecobels. See you in the next video.